Welcome and thank you for joining us today for our January webinar, Yeast Free and Me. I am joined today uh, with Dr. Don Ellsworth. I've asked him to join me today because he is so passionate about yeast. And so we're just going to answer some questions. Uh, following a yeast treatment or eating program can absolutely change your life. Um, it can improve your health. It can help you lose some weight. Um, it can even help you with allergies. So um, these are some questions that we've encountered mm -hmm. at uh, the Wellness Center and in Physicians Preference also. Uh, and I know I've worked with Dr. Ellsworth for about 10 years, and so I know how passionate he is. And so let's just go ahead and get started absolutely. with some questions. All right. Well, thank so, you, Sally. Absolutely. Uh, first, can you just explain what it is? What is yeast overgrowth? Well, yeast overgrowth is basically candida, and it overgrows largely in our large intestine. And it is a fungus, basically. Think of it as a mold overgrowth problem. And nobody likes to live in a moldy house, and we really don't want a moldy internal home. And that's right. basically what we're talking about. And we have so many different problems once that happens. That sounds a little scary when you think about just when you see mold growing in your house, mm -hmm. and if you can envision that in your colon, right? Mm -hmm. So what hap what makes that happen? Why would that even start? That's a great question. And it wasn't really an issue when we didn't do a lot of what we do today with antibiotics and birth control pills and steroids. So These are all common problems, ourselves. largely. This wow. was not an issue you would have encountered before this past century. Once we started using these medications, drugs, we really altered our bodies in some ways that were unintended consequences. When you take an antibiotic, you're going after the bad bacteria. You're trying to get rid of the sinus infection, the tonsil infection, uh, the pneumonia, urinary tract infection. But there are some friendly bacteria that we absolutely cannot be healthy without. In fact, there's about two pounds of these good bacteria. And you see the yogurt commercials talking about the live right. cultures. Uh -huh. And we're talking about bifidobacteria, lactobacilli. When those are eradicated, and they're actually pretty fragile, so you often really do wipe them out in a big way when you take an antibiotic. When you wipe those out, you leave the GI tract a perfect culture media for growing the candida or yeast. It's wow. warm. It's moist. There's food. Just imagine it's if dark. yeah, dark. Yes. You have a dark, warm, dark. damp place with yes. food in your house. You come back and look at that area a week or two later, and stuff's going to be growing on it. Well, right. the, the GI tract is like that, and once she starts overgrowing, it, be, it takes on a life of its own because it can now defend itself against the things you might try to do to get rid of it. Right, and and sometimes you might not even know it's happening. Is that right? You just have other health problems that you don't associate maybe to yeast. Yes, and, and there's a lot of symptoms that are subtle. And you know, Sally, mm -hmm. I should also mention some things. I've talked with folks who say, you know, I just, I've never taken an antibiotic. And that's actually right. rare when people th go back and think about their childhood because really, you never saw a doctor and took anything for an ear infection. You've never had strep throat. You've never take, right. had surgery where they talked about giving you antibiotics around the time of the surgery. But let's say you never took an antibiotic in your life. You could still get yeast overgrowth, even if you didn't take birth control pills, even if you didn't take steroids, because you'll often be exposed to the antibiotics and hormones in meat, like poultry. A lot of right. things you buy that is not organic, what do they do to prevent infection? They give them antibiotics. A lot of the milk you buy has antibiotics in it. So you're getting them. You're getting antibiotics though. in a lot of different ways. And then wow. we add chlorine to the water, which is to kill... The, the microorganisms, but it preferentially will kill off the more fragile bacteria, the good bacteria we need, over the hardier yeast. So wow. bottom line is it's not easy to avoid getting this problem of yeast overgrowth. Right. So it's very important to try to reestablish that balance in the colon. Absolutely critical. So if you have not recently done a yeast cleanse, the chances are you need to be doing this because we really are very prone to this problem. Right. And so I know at the Wellness Center and Physicians Preference, we um, encourage our staff to do it at least once a year mm -hmm. and our guests. Um, and so we've actually come up with what we call a 30-day uh, Yeast Free With Me Challenge. And that is really to help people just clean up their diet, get back on track, and to help make uh, the new year a good year. This is a behavioral change issue, too. You have right. to eat differently to get rid of yeast. And before we get into what you need to do to get rid of it, though, I want to talk about some of the problems that come from yeast. Um, you know, I think most of us assume that we have a problem and go to the doctor. The doctor is going to look at us, tell us what the problem is, and treat it. Right. 
The problem with candida or yeast is we don't hear about this in our training. We do not have a lecture that talks about it. Now, what physicians are aware of is if you have a really sick person with a weak immune system, how fungal problems can be present. They know about that. I saw that in my training in nursing school. Right. Absolutely, they'd have that secondary infection. Exactly. But yet they weren't going for the root cause. Well, the, the problem comes in when, you, when you're perceived to be otherwise healthy. You know, you don't have a problem with um, a, a weakened immune system from chemotherapy or other, you know, illnesses that really make a difference with our immune system. And your and so, blood work looks good. Yeah, and doctors assume that if there's any candida there, that it's not going to cause mischief. That's yeah. in part because we don't think about the GI tract as being as important as it is. The gut is actually not just for swallowing things, and doctors will look for tumors, you know, when they do scoping, look for ulcers, mm -hmm. but it's actually a very dynamic interface. Basically, the GI tract is where we take food, we break it down to the small little components that we need for good nutrition, and then it goes into our bloodstream in this pure form of just a single amino acid, a single little sugar. Instead of being a, uh, when, when you first start to break things down, it's a group of things. And one of the big problems we get into with yeast overgrowth is the gut becomes leakier. It becomes more like, instead of being this very fine screen that you might imagine, um, a screen door in your house, you know, where you have it very fine, so even small mosquitoes can't get through, what you start winding up with is having a lot of holes. And so now you're starting to get these insects coming in and causing a lot of trouble. If the gut has leakiness to it, it'll let things in from the outside world that don't belong in your body. Your bloodstream should not be seeing these groups of amino acids. So you'll eat a perfectly harmless food, but your body doesn't break it down properly, so you start reacting to everything you're eating. Wow. This is very common. Food allergies develop when you have yeast overgrowth. Food allergies can look like things like, I feel tired. You ever heard that? Absolutely, all <laughs> the time. Mm -hmm. Feel depressed? Right. I feel anxious. It can make you start having allergy symptoms. You can start having wheezing, asthma. You can start developing problems with reflux, and the list goes on, rashes. But basically, food allergies are one of the biggest problems with leaky gut and yeast overgrowth because right. they go together. So you have more problems with food allergies. You're also going to have more airborne allergies. You know, it's not complex. If you're living in a moldy house, would you have more allergies? Right. You, Absolutely. If you, you live, if you're living with a moldy house, you're going to have more allergies. And this is our house. This. Right. And this is daily. This is day in, day out, 24-7. Right. You're also going to tend to have some fuzzy thinking. Brain fog is a common issue. People report to us where they can't think clearly. And one of the things that can be going on is yeast overgrowth. Like 180 chemicals are made when we have yeast overgrowth. Wow, that's amazing. Including alcohol, actually. One of the interesting things about having yeast overgrowth is the sugary, starchy foods we eat are broken down into the little sugar components, but you know what our, what yeast like to do with sugar? Turn it to alcohol. Ah, a party. And then it turns to aldehydes. And this wow. microbrewery that we get in our GI tract is not the kind of thing that you want. You know, the, some people like the specialty beers made by microbreweries out there. Right. Well, you don't want it in here because this is 24-7, so you're waking up in the morning with the effects of the alcohol and those aldehydes making you fuzzy brain, feeling tired. Uh, people have actually wow. had detectable levels of alcohol in their body who are non-drinkers, simply from That's the yeast amazing. in their GI tract. So it's like they're hungover all the time. Exactly. From You're having, uh, you know, maybe a high grade, but often it's a low grade feeling of being hungover, having too much to drink the night before, but it's not something that goes away in a few hours. You live with it 24-7. Imagine how horrible that would be. Wow. That explains a lot why people just simply don't feel well and why they feel tired. That's uh, amazing. 